very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to 321. We'd love to have the pleasure of your company for the next hour of gags, games, questions, quizzes, big star guests and big star prizes on this new fun show for the whole family. I'm lucky to be here tonight because, well, if my old headmaster could see me running a quiz. <laughs> um, were, you, were you any good at school? I couldn't even study. I didn't know, really. No, well, the way I looked at it was the more you study, the more you know. The more you know, the more you can forget. <laughs> The more you can forget, the more you do forget. The more you do forget, the less you know. So why study? <laughs> anyway, I've got a great team to help me, and I want you to come along and meet them right now. They're my six sumptuous secretaries, so let's meet them. Girls, three, two, one. <laughs> oh, hey, lad. Hey. Nicholas Parsons, six. <laughs> Aren't they delightful? This is lovely Tula. This is Gail Playfair. Miss Jenny Leyland. Lovely Holly Allen Smith. Patsy Ann Scott. And Mademoiselle Mireille Alonville du Paris. So, ladies. <laughs> off you go. See you in just a moment. Shan't be long. We'll be really, really. Mireille? There's someone behind you who embarrasses me. Hey? I am being followed. No, Mireille, you've got that wrong. It's not English. It's not been followed. It's being followed, have been followed. I am being followed. Really? Oh, been. Oh, I'm sorry, Ben. This is what she means, of course. This is lovely, dusty Ben. Do you like him? Oh, he's a sweetheart. I love him dearly. Unfortunately, he's our booby prize. Yeah, and our contestants are going to try to avoid him because uh, he could stop them from winning the brand new motor car or one of the other four fabulous prizes that we have lined up later on. So, George, if you'd like to come in, George, would you? Thank you. Bye, Dusty. Thank you, George. George is my chauffeur. She drives me always. Crazy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the first part of our show is called, uh, well, we go in for a whole thousand pounds. That's what we're after, a thousand pounds. The show's called 321. Three couples start off in a quiz, then two couples compete in a game, and then one couple go forward to those really big, big prizes. So let's meet the most important people on our show tonight, of course, our contestants. <laughs> Well, in this part of the show, the, the uh, contestants carry up to a thousand pounds in the thousand to one quiz. They have to answer three sets of questions against the clock. Can we have the questions in, please, girls? These are the questions that you chose in the lucky dip just before the program started tonight. Now, all of these uh, questions, of course, will be checked professionally and quietly behind the scenes. They've been set professionally, but behind the scenes in our production office and anything but quiet are three characters who will make comments to your answers if you should make a mistake. They are Chris Emmett, Debbie Arnold, and Dougie Brown. All right, you lot, come on, give us a sample laugh. Come on. Hey? Hey? Uh, um, uh. Here is the news. In Leeds early today, thieves broke into a police station. Nothing was stolen except the toilet. And so far, the police have got nothing to go on. <laughs> 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 That's the kind of rubbish you can expect to hear from them all night. So whatever you do, do yourself a favor and get your questions right, okay? Right. Let's go along and meet our contestants. Okay, Patsy, and who are our first couple tonight? Well, Ted, we have Roger Carver and his friend Chris Simons, who come from Romford in Essex. He lectures in law, and she does a lot of work for charity. Great, lectures in and, law. Yes, and this is Mr. Rogers. He's our boss. There you go. Lecture in law then, Roger, yes, eh? that's right, yes. That's incredible. A lot of my family are in the legal profession. Really? Yeah, I've got a sister-in-law, a mother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's lovely. It's delightful to have you here. Could, could we have the first set of questions there, please, Patsy? Thank you. I see Roger and Chris, you've chosen red one. Okay, now in this first set of questions, that's it, hold his hand, I saw that. You're going for a pound a question, but we want you to do well in this first round, because, well, the amount you win at the end of the first round will be the amount you're playing for per question in the second round, likewise the end of the second round, playing for that in the third round. Now, there are many answers to these questions. We only want ten. But we should stop you if you make a mistake, or indeed if you repeat an answer, or if you run out of time. Now, time-wise, you have 30 seconds for ten answers, okay? And we want you to answer alternately. Chris first, Roger second, Chris, Roger, Chris, all right? For a pound a question, I'm going to give you one to start with. Now, please give us the common names for the sorts of vegetables commonly grown in British gardens. 
Now, we want potato, not varieties of potato like Aaron, Pilot, or King Edward, all right? And we don't want herbs. Is that clear? All right? Common names of vegetables grown in the British Isles. I'll give you one to start with. Potato, go. Potato. Tomato. Cabbage. Leek. Cauliflower. Um, radish. Sprouts. Uh, spring onion. Lettuce. Carrot. Oh, well done. Well done, well done. Well done, Joe. Good. 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 Just how well? Chris and Roger scored a maximum of 10 points. A maximum of 10 it's points in the good. first round. Chris and Roger, congratulations. Oh, that's lovely. Well, now. Ten pounds a question you're playing for next time. That's pretty high stakes starting off like that. Okay, now then, who do we have, Holly? Well, this is Trevor Long and his wife, Janice. They oh, both yeah, come from you. Liverpool and manage a record shop. I believe you used to work for Freddie Laker yes, Skytrain. that's right. You? I was an air hostess for Laker Airways for did, two and a half years. Really? Did you actually work on the Skytrain? Well, I used to go to New York practically um, every other week. I've obviously. done that trip many times. Yeah, 59 great. pounds. 59. So cheap. Smashing. Great. The only trouble is they've got to make the money back some way, so for the first hundred miles, you're crop spraying. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Trevor. Trevor and Janice, this time for a pound, you know what you have to do. Answer alternately. Janice, and we'll look at... Ah, they're excited. <laughs> I'm going to give you one pound to start with, and here's the question. Uh, it's please name countries on the mainland of Europe. If there is an alternative name, you can only have one. All right? So countries on the mainland of Europe. The one I'm going to give you is the USSR, Russia. Russia. France. Um, Spain. Belgium. Italy. Portugal. Holland. Denmark. Sweden. Germany. Well, there we are. Okay, we took the 30 seconds, but yes. how did they do there, guys? Well, Janice and Trevor also scored maximum. They got maximum. We got two maximums. Two tens. Ten pound a question next time. Massive. Lovely. Oh, well, that's terrific. What an edge we've got already here. Okay, Mireille, who are our third couple? This is Michael Schenkin and his wife, Geraldine, from Glasgow. He is an export sales director, and she is in a final year of a teacher training course. <laughs> who cares? Give us a kiss. <laughs> oh, that's delightful to have you here. Geraldine and Michael, lovely. That's really marvellous. Oh, teacher training course. And you come up there and it's from Bonnie Scotland, do you? That's right. I see. My, do you have any hobbies? My Yes, football and football? history. Football from Scotland, huh? <laughs> <laughs> And history. Oh. Who, who do you like in history? Who's your sort of favourite character? Napoleon. Napoleon? Yeah. And do you liken him to anybody, say, of modern day? Yeah, well, um, Ali McLeod, I suppose, in the start of army. <laughs> well, you said that. Why would you say that? Well, they just met in a Waterloo. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Yeah, look at them. Geraldine's sitting there holding his hand under there. You can't see what's going on. Lovely. Good luck to you. Can we have the question, please? Okay. You know what you have to do? Answer alternately. One pound a question. Good luck to you both. I'm going to give you one to start with. We want you, please, to name the types of spoons. Now, we're not thinking of the material that they're made of, for example, wooden spoon or silver spoon, but rather the name of the spoon which indicates its use. Okay? We want different spoons. I'm going to give you one to start with. Teaspoon. Go. Teaspoon. Soup spoon. Tablespoon. Or dessert spoon. Dessert spoon. Silver spoon. I say, I say, I say, who was that ladle I saw you with last night? That was no ladle. That was my knife. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh dear, oh dear. Oh. Oh. Well, I'm glad I didn't have to say that. Anyway, how well did they do there, Gail? Geraldine and Michael scored five. Five. Geraldine and Michael. Well, well, what do we have here? Well, now. Okay, we've got Chris and Roger on ten, we've got Trevor and Janice on ten, and uh, Geraldine and Michael on five, but that's just the first round. Now we're going into the second round. These are the more difficult questions, okay? So get those caps going. Good luck to you. Have, could we have the questions, please, Patsy? This time you've chosen yellow six. Now then, let's see what we have. For ten pounds a question, 
I'll give you one, of course, to start with. We want you to name tools which may, might be found in the average household toolbox. And we want the basic item, for example, hammer, not claw hammer or club hammer, etc. Do you understand that? All right? Average household tools. I'll give you one to start with, a hammer. Go. Hammer. Saw. Screwdriver. Chisel. Clippers. Uh, shears. <laughs> Sorry about that, old son. We were really rooting for you. Now, let's meet our next contestant. Tell me, sir, what do you do? I eat hammers. <laughs> Tell me, are you a professional? No, I'm an amateur. <laughs> oh. I don't believe it. Oh. Dougie, with that kind of joke, you're a credit to your profession. An antique dealer. <laughs> anyway, how did they do? Roger and Chris have scored five, which at 10 pounds a question is 50 pounds. You scored five there because, Roger, you in fact, you in fact made the mistake. You did say the garden shears, and they are garden shears. They are not household tools, okay? Right. But nevertheless, you've got 50 pounds to play for per question in the next round. Okay, Holly, maybe we have the next set of questions, please, for Janice. And for Trev, good luck to you both. You. You're on 10 pounds as well. That's, a, that's maximum. Good luck. Here we come now. Please name the principal daily newspapers which are published in London for national distribution. We want principal daily newspapers. I'm going to give you one to start with, OK? I'll give you the Daily Express. Daily Express. The Sun. The Mail. The Telegraph. Um, the Times. The Guardian. Um, uh, ooh. Um, Star. Morning Star. Uh, Evening Standard. <laughs> there is nothing in the papers today. Oh well, no news. It's good news. <laughs> and no joke is no joke. <laughs> well, how well did they do, Jenny? There. Uh, Trevor and Janice scored seven, which at ten pounds a question is seventy pounds. Seventy pounds. Well, that's not bad. Seventy pounds. You see. In fact, you did, in fact, say the London Evening News, London Evening Standard, they are classified yeah. as just local London papers. OK, but nevertheless, you're in the lead at the moment with 70 pounds. Pretty good. OK, Marie, the second set of questions, please, for Michael and Geraldine. Now then, you're going for five pounds a question this time. Thank you. This concerns the Olympic Games and the central events which take place in a stadium. Please name the cities where the main stadium of each Olympic Games was situated. OK? All the Olympic Games were situated in different different cities throughout the years. I'm going to give you one to start with. I'll give you Munich. Munich. Yeah. London. Something out. Come on, do something. You know, my father should have represented Great Britain in the Olympic Games. You know, he did the 100 yards in 8.2 seconds flat with his wellies on. How did he do that? He fell down the lift shaft. <laughs> Oh, dear. Well, OK, Jenny, just how well did they do at the end of that round? Well, Michael and Geraldine have scored two. At five pounds a question, that's ten pounds. Two. Uh, you know why that was, in fact, because you did uh, go out of turn. You should answer alternately. And, Michael, you Sorry. gave London and your anxiety. You tried to prompt Geraldine with Rome, and you said Rome. But you got two, so you're now on ten pounds. So at the end of our first round, we've got the first couple on fifty pounds, second on seventy, and our third couple on ten pounds. So in the lead at the moment, we've got Trevor and Janice on seventy pounds. How about that? Ooh. Right. OK, folks, this is where it all happens this time. Patsy, do we have the third set of questions? These are the most difficult questions, of course. OK, then. Chris, Roger, you're playing for 50 pounds. Hold him tight. I can see it all going on there. Good luck to you both. This question concerns regular members of a modern symphony orchestra. We want you to name the instruments which make up the woodwind and the brass. OK, the woodwind and the brass sections of a modern symphony orchestra. I'll give you one to start with. Trumpet, go. Trumpet. Flute. Bassoon. Oh, dear. Uh, tuba. Um, clarinet. 
Uh, French horn. Um. <laughs> Flute. Wait, 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 no, shut up. You know they missed out the biggest wind instrument of all time? Who's that? Ian Paisley! <laughs> <laughs> okay, Sheila. How well did they do, Sheila? Just how well did they do? Which makes a total of 300 pounds. Six making a total of 300 pounds, even though you made that mistake. Yes, that's wonderful. You, in fact, repeated, of course, repeated flute, but nevertheless, 300 pounds is a very good score. OK, can we have the third set of questions, please, Holly? Good luck, Janice. Good luck, Trevor. Here it yeah. comes. You're playing for 70 pounds a question. OK, I will give you one. We want you, please, to name Walt Disney cartoon feature films. Cartoon feature films. I'll give you one to start with. Pinocchio. Go. Pinocchio. Ooh. A thousand moon Dalmatians. I saw a Walt Disney character last night on University Challenge. Who was that? Bambi Gascoigne. <laughs> Bambi Gascoigne. No! Oh, 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 no. Oh, oh, no. Okay, Tula. Just how well did they do there? Well, Trevor and Janice have scored one, which makes the total of 70 pounds. Stayed on 70 pounds, because the one I gave you, of course, was the one, but uh, you did say 1,001 Dalmatians, and it's 101 Dalmatians. Michael and Geraldine, you've got 10 pounds. You've really got to go some this time. <laughs> Nevertheless, who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? I'm going to give you, I'll give you one naturally to start with, but we want you, please, to name the presidents of the United States this century, all right? I'll give you an easy one to start with. Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter. Lyndon Johnson. Kennedy. <coughs> Franklin Roosevelt. Um. Um. Oh, just about gone, that bell, isn't it? Great. Well, time's up, I'm afraid. You did, in, in fact, just get four there. You could have said Nixon, Ford, Eisenhower, R. Harding, Roosevelt, Truman, etc. It goes on and on and on. But nevertheless, you did score 40 pounds. Couple number two, you got 70 pounds. But our winners tonight in the quiz are Chris and Roger with 300 pounds. Hey, come along, Chris. Roger. Down you jump. All right, then. Here you go, Dale. Would you present them with that? The sashes? George, where's George? Come on, George. Hey. Thank you, George. God bless you. Hey. How's that? That looks pretty good. 300 smackaroos. OK, grab a hold of that. God bless. We'll see you next week. Ooh. Chris, I won't argue about that. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going away just for a couple of minutes now, a little break, but be back soon because there's lots more fun on 3, 2, 1. See you soon. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to part two of 321, where you're about to join us aboard our cruise ship, Yorkshire Rose. But first, before we go any further, uh, this is the point in the show where our winners of our quiz, because the show winners, 321, the winners of the quiz, they leave us each week at this point. They've won 300 pounds. You've won the right to come back next week and compete in the quiz. 300 quid, I hope you're gonna enjoy it, Rog. Okay, God bless you. You too, Chris. Spend it wisely. Thank you. Okay, we, we started with three couples. OK, now we have two. Pretty soon it's going to be just one. Because any moment now, these delightful folks here will be locked in mortal combat. OK, would you like to go to your positions? You know what you have to do. You just get yourselves over there while I'll explain to the folks exactly what's going to happen here. All right, now, what we're going to do here, our contestants are going to watch a screen. Now, well, what we want to do is to look at the screen of this next little sketchlet and try and remember all they see and hear what goes on in their little scene, OK? as we go aboard our ship, Yorkshire Rose, as she leaves Harbour. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, could you all assemble down here, please? Uh, whilst we're leaving port, you're all invited to take a drink with our captain. So may I introduce uh, you to him? Ladies and gentlemen, Captain T. Thank you.
Hello, shipmates. Sailing, we are sailing. First of all, let me welcome you aboard the good ship, Yorkshire Rose. Though I'm your captain, just think of me as an extra passenger. Maggie always does. <laughs> now then. Now then, as your captain, I'm only allowed to have one drink. That's right, sir, just one drink? Just one drink. Yes, yes well, with that one drink, I'd like to wish all the passengers bon voyage. Bon voyage. <laughs> After all, I'm still running a party. But instead of the left to right, we have starboard and... Uh, Port. Thank you very much. Too kind. <laughs> now, let me tell you a little bit about the ship. There's deck games and there's a card room where we shall be playing bridge, poker and rummy. Gin? Too kind. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> For the music lovers, I shall, of course, be conducting a concert performance of Handel's... Uh, Largo. Just a half. Thank you very much. <laughs> As for the food, as for the food, our excellent ref, uh, excellent chef, is a cordon bleu, a blue dom cord. Uh, well, anyway, he does a wonderful steak. Fill it. Good idea. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, now, for breakfast, for breakfast, you can have a, a bit of shisket, uh, a ship's biscuit, uh, oh, quite, uh, or, or a hash of ram or a kill gripper. Or, if you prefer, you can just have coffee and, uh... Toast. Good idea. Cheers. <laughs> well, 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 if you'd like to come round here and join me, would you please, at these lecterns here? <laughs> now, how much of that did you remember? How much of you? I'm sure. <laughs> Neither did I. I hope you folks, too, were looking in, because we want you to play this game as well, if you can. Oh, by the way, if anybody thinks that that character that Chris Emmett just played bears any relation to any sort of statesman we know, or grand yachting gentleman, it was only fun, really, because us Ted's have got to stick together. <laughs> All right, now, look, I hope you were observing that set of the scene there. You were, because uh, we've got some questions here for you. We've got ten questions, all right? And these questions, folks at home, will be coming up at the bottom of your screen, so this is how you can play along as well. We want you to try and remember all you can about that scene and answer those questions. That's the fellas. Now, what we want the ladies to do while that is going on, to go over there to play deck quoits, OK? Would you like to go over, pick up the deck quoits? There they are there. There we are. Pick those up there. Grab a hold of some. Get ready to chuck, because uh, this is going to add up at the end. The questions and the deck quoits will be put together. Naturally, the winner goes forward to win the big, big prizes later on. OK, you know what you have to do? Yep. You all set? Is Gail there with the whistle? She's got the whistle to get her started. Does it work, Gail? Yes, it does. We'll give it another go. I love being whistled at by a lady. Ooh. OK, you all set? OK, on the first whistle... Just a minute, we haven't started yet. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Get back. On the first whistle, you start. On the second whistle, you change over. The ladies come over here, answer the questions. Fellas, you go over there, you try and get the deck in the basket. On the third whistle, you stop, come back here, and then we'll add up the questions and the deck coins and see how well you did, all right? You all set? You all set back there? Good luck to you all. Three, two, one. <whistles> hey, that. I'm writing furiously here. Going very, very well. My goodness, how are we doing over here? Not bad. That's it. Hey, three there isn't bad. Pretty good. Two, that's it. Hey, they're pretty skillful, these people. All right, change over. Quick, get over there to the dead coins. Back here you come, ladies. There you are. Answer those questions. If you disagree with them, you can cross them out and put your own answer. But that's down to you. That's on your head, all right? Oh, yes, you crossed it out. You know something he doesn't? Now the dead coins go. Time's up. OK, fellas, would you like to come back to your ladies, please? Join them over here at the lecterns. That was pretty good, I think. Hey, Gail, we have the, we have the answers there? We do. All right, this is where it all happens here. OK, we all set now? We all set to do the checking? We're going to trust you, by the way, to do your own checking, but to make sure somebody's keeping an eye on you, we have secretaries here to have a look, OK? All right, then? 
They're too busy seeing, seeing how much they've got. OK, let's answer the first question. The first question was, how many siren blasts were there? There were three. How did you get on? Two. Two. two, two. Ooh, nothing. What was the captain's name? Teeth. 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 Yes, you've got that. You have it. OK. Who thinks of the captain as a passenger? Maggie Teeth. Thatcher. Maggie. Yes, you got that? Good. You did. Oh, got that wrong. Mm. How many girls with trays were there? There were three. Said two. Two? Yeah. Mm. OK. <laughs> what was the captain's second drink? It was a port. You got that? Was the stewardess's, the stewardess, was she wearing a hat? No. OK. On which arm did the stewardess have a napkin? The right. Left. Name two of the three card games mentioned. There was bridge, poker, and rummy. All right? You got, OK. How many drinks did the captain have? He had six. six. Yeah. And how many rings on the captain's jacket? There were eight, four on each arm. Ah. Eight? Ah, you see? What have we got here now? We've got three, six, three. It all depends on the quoits. Girls, would you like to bring them in? Holly, Mireille, what have we got now? How many do you have? This couple is called ten. Ten, ten, and six is sixteen. And what do you have here? My couple is called... 11. 11. 11 and 3 of 14. So definitely you're the winners, right? The winners tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, that's great. Hey, George. Come in, George. Thank you, George. The couple B. Okay, just a sec. What have we got here? Okay, yes. Well, you're our losers, but nobody loses on this show. You won 40 pounds in the quiz. There it is. I'm sure you're going to take that, aren't you, Geraldine? That's a pleasure. Would you like to come in? Just one little thing to take with you before you go little thing that uh, Gail has here for you. It's a silver picture. That's a picture of the girls and I, the gentle sex, but not to worry about that so much. Because during the show tonight, a photograph has been taken of you. It'll be sent to you in a day or two. You can put it in that frame on the mantelpiece as a nice reminder of your visit here to Leeds. It's been lovely having you here. Thank you, Geraldine. God bless, Michael. Thank you very much for coming. How about a lovely sport? Aren't they great? Thank you. Hey. <laughs> hey. Come on, Janice, Trevor, there you go. There's that 70 pounds that you won in the quiz. Has she got to have it? Yeah, so. All right. Oh, God, you sort that out later. I'll tell you what, you've got to come over here right now because now this is where it really starts. Would you like to stand there, Janice, Trevor, would you like to go around there? Because, no, stand at the head there, love, I'm would you? Sorry. That's all right. I'll tell you why. This is, um, this is where you've got a chance for the really big prizes. We've got six prizes. Now, you've seen one scene, okay? You've remembered quite a bit about that scene. And, of course, with the prizes coming up, there's the motor car, there's that old dustbin that you might get. We're going to sort of uh, give you these scenes, and we want to leave little objects at the end of the scene, and there'll also be a rhyme given to you at the end of the scene to give you some kind of idea, maybe what that particular prize might be. And at the end of that scene, OK, Debbie, have we got it? There's the captain stewardess. Uh -huh. She's leaving us with a little object, a little prop object, a little, a tumbler, a glass. A glass. Yes. And I have a little rhyme. A little rhyme. Try and think about this. Tanked up on three star and how, the captain's in the doghouse now. Well, there you go. Does that mean a great deal to you? No? No, no me neither. OK, well, I'll tell you what, never mind that. We'll put that there for you to think about because there's going to be a lot of these to think about, because we're going back on board. Yorkshire Rose, keep watching for another scene. I'm on the captain! I'm oh. oh. the first aid officer! Oh. Somebody! Oh. Oh. Just, look at that! What do you want the captain for? I want you to marry us. Marry? In half an hour's time, we could be man and fish. <laughs> but just, just a minute, I mean, marry, how can you marry a mermaid? Well, I can't throw her back unless she's too big. I could just picture it now, it'd be a beautiful affair. I'd be wearing a nice dinner jacket, she can wear a nice white wine sauce and a bit of parsley here and there. <laughs> hey, that'd be a change, wouldn't it? Usually the groom wears the tails. Just a minute, before you go, aren't you going to leave her as an object? Hey. Couldn't you leave her as a clue? You know how you're allergic to fish. I'm not. not Range out in scales. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'll do. I will leave you that. The goggles. The goggles. And there's a clue. Listen to this clue. <coughs> if you can get Find your own gear, go for a sail, and search in the place of the fishy tail. Well, How's, there that? You are. How's that? I've got to dash off. We're frying tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go, back on board the ship for another little trip. What's the matter, madam? What's the matter? I've just tripped over an old boy. Oh, we'll have it removed at once. Don't worry. <laughs> well done. Well done. Oh, well. Yeah. Where's the lovely girl? 
You again? You ought to be ashamed of yourself, sir. You told me you'd come cruising for the rest. I did come for the rest. That's what I did come. I came for the rest. And what happened was I was here last year and I went out with three hairdressers, um, uh, um, um, two uh, purser's secretaries, and now I've come for the rest. <laughs> Oh, beautiful oh, girl. Wow. Oh, what a beautiful girl. You are wolf in sheep's clothing. Oh, I don't know what's got into you, sir. I think it's all this seafood. How many oysters did you have last night? I had six oysters and only three of them worked. Now, just a minute. Stand back, please. Stand back. I, oh, you're a lovely little thing. Oh, mm, <laughs> you remind me of my mother. Keep your hands off me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, don't cry, my naughty fellow. Yeah, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're foreign, aren't you? Yes, I am. Say I am? I thought she was French. <laughs> I love Oriental ladies. On the road to Mandalay, where the flag is in play. And the road comes up my tongue, so run too fast, my dear. Hey, 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 just, just. <laughs> have you got a little object you can leave for us, please? A little object, And I a have. little rhyme, maybe. I have. There we are, sir. There is a MacGuffin. A what? That's a hat. Yes, it may be a hat to you, sir. But to me, it is a MacGuffin, sir. Yes, sir. A MacGuffin? What's a MacGuffin? You don't know what a MacGuffin is. Do you know what a MacGuffin is? No. No, we know. Well, I'll tell you this, sir. Very shortly, we hope that all the people out there on dry land will be writing to you and telling you what a MacGuffin is, you see, oh, sir? Really? Well, I'm yes. intrigued. I am intrigued. But first of all, uh, I mean, you're going to leave us this here. This is a hat, but you're going to call it a MacGuffin. That is a MacGuffin, and that is a MacGuffin, and that is a MacGuffin. I'll take your word for it. Try, sir. Do you have a little rhyme for it? I have a little rhyme. Now, listen carefully, because I haven't got best to read it twice. <laughs> Although I'm slightly rusty, me motor's quite all right. I'm getting married in the morning. Should I stay out all night? I doubt it very much. Well, anyway, that's very, very nice of you to come along, sir. Thank you and bless you for this hat, MacGuffin, and this uh, lovely little rhyme. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much indeed. Pleasure. Thank you for being absolutely British, if you'll excuse such a filthy expression. <laughs> <laughs> well, a happy MacGuffin to you all, and I hope we meet again under happy circumstances. Okay, look at that. We've got the grass here from the first bit. We've got the goggles from the second, and this hat, Pat McGuffin, from the third. Now, uh, you have to reject one of those, okay? There are six prizes. One of them is the dustbin, so it's up to you to try and figure them out. Now, I can give them to you once again. You've just heard the one from Clive. He said, although I'm slightly rusty, me motor's quite all right. I'm getting married in the morning. Should I stay out all night? Now, what could that mean? That goes with the hat. In the first sketch, of course, we had the tumbler that was left from the captain's party, tanked up on Three Star, and how the captain's in the doghouse now. Does that ring any bells? Or else we also have, from Dougie's sketch with the mermaid, find your own gear, go for a sail, in, and search in the place of the fishy tail. So you've got to reject one. Which one will it be? Reject this. Oh, definite about that? Oh, yes. Hey. Trev? <laughs> don't say that. Don't say really? That. You want to definitely yes. reject yes. that? Yes. Yes, why not? All oh, right. Oh, you're sure about that? Do you want have second thoughts? Could oh. be the mo well, I mean, I don't know. You know, you're no, just as good no, as mine. No, definitely, definitely. You, you want to reject that? Yeah. yeah. All reject right. Clive Dunn. <laughs> <laughs> you reject Clive Dunn? <laughs> Not many people do that. <laughs> Although I'm slightly rusty, my motor's quite all right. Well, I don't know about that. It could be a rusty bin, but we could hardly give you a rusty motor car. I'm getting married in the morning. Now, there's a clue. Mm. Have you ever seen My Fair Lady? I'm sure you have. Well, who was getting married in the morning? It was Doolittle, the dustman, and that was the prize, Dusty Bin. Oh, yes, you it. You rejected it. Have a look. <laughs> there he is. Isn't he sweet? He's great, isn't he? Have a look. Oh, he's cute. Unfortunately, you don't take Dusty Bin away. Oh, he's smashed. He's a sweetheart, isn't he? He's good, isn't he? He's yeah. my he's friend for life. He's in the flat. I tell you, well, if you think he would look great in the flat, he's got to stay with us now for 13 weeks. But what would look great in the flat? Maybe there's a little something that's in the top here. Yes, oh, it's a miniature smashing. Dusty Bin. Oh, that ceramic Dusty Bin. OK, Pat, there you are. Stick him on the end of the table. He can stand there with you. All right, Dad. Take the hat. Thank you. Oh. Well, you scored right out the gun there, didn't you? <laughs> OK, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to come back in just a couple of moments' time now because we've got more prizes and more scenes aboard our cruise ship Yorkshire Road. See you shortly. Take care. <laughs> Well, 
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to part three of three, two, one, where you join us as our uh, winning contestants here through to the third part of the show, Janice and Trevor from Liverpool. They've just rejected the dustbin, so you've got five super prizes to go for, including that, pro that great big car, okay? Lovely new car it is. Anyway, our theme, the theme of our show this week, we have themes every week on our show, is cruising. So we're going back on board our Yorkshire Rose once again for yet another scene. Isn't it romantic? Isn't it romantic the way the moonbeams dance on the water like that? Yes, very, very romantic. But when we're back on dry land, will you even remember my name? Oh, of course I will, Amanda. It's swell. Just testing, dear. I mean, would you still love me if I hadn't told you that Daddy had five million pints? Of of course I would, dear. I would love you even if you only had half that much. Say you'll be my wife and I will love you till the end of time, or even crossroads, whichever lasts longer. Yes, 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 I will marry you, Rodney. You have made me so very happy. Oh, my Simone. Oh, my love. Mm. Oh, my God. Hey, you two, what are you doing up there? You're supposed to be serving dinner on the lower deck. You're supposed to be working in the laundry. Laundry? Do you mean you're not a millionaire's daughter? Well, no, the rotten cheek is me working my fingers to the bone trying to find a nice man to take me away from it all. If there's one thing I can't stand, it's a rotten cheat! <laughs> Last call for dinner. Last call for dinner. Oh, oh. Okay, Chris, what's this? The Bermuda Triangle? Yes, don't lose it. <laughs> now, you're not going to leave that, are you, as I'm a clue? I'm afraid I am, yes. That great triangle is a clue. Yes, I'm uh, watching all. And do you have a little, little rhyme for us? I was ahead of you there. Uh, yes, here it is. Listen carefully. Although a prize she thought she'd found, did he give her the runaround? Aha. Uh -huh. There you are, Ted. Did he? Thank you very much indeed, Chris. Well, there we are. We're back to rejection time. We've got three objects, three MacGuffins, or whatever Clive <laughs> called them. They're there, you have to reject one. You've just heard that one from Clive. Uh, I can, I'll tell you what I can do. I can't give you the two of them again. I can give you one or the other. Which one would you like to hear again? The, the glass, glass? One, yeah. All right, the glass one, which of course was from the captain's party. That was tanked up on three star, and how the captain's in the doghouse now. Does that mean anything to you there? Something has to go. What's going to go? The goggles? The glass? Yeah. First of all, tanked up on three star and how the captain's in the doghouse now. Sunday. Well, you could expect a car to be tanked up on three star petrol. The three star is also, of course, it's of course a brandy. The rhyme mentioned in the doghouse, what sort of dog is connected Sunday. with brandy? Well, what other than a St. Bernard dog? And that's what you would have won, a lovely St. Bernard dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, really? what a sweetheart he is, isn't he, eh? My oh, goodness. I'm sorry. You're sorry? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry about that. She's sorry about that. Well, look, I'm going to have to cook them anyway. Well, I'll tell you what. He says he didn't know how to cook them anyway. That's pretty good. <laughs> Listen. 150 pounds he's worth. If you wouldn't have wanted them, we could have sold him back to the kennels, of course. You'd have got 150 pounds. But Jenny has just given me another card here. It says another prize the dog couldn't carry was brandy, and that, well, he can carry brandy in the little bottle there, but a uh, little barrel it has, but you, in fact, have lost a whole year's supply of brandy. Favorite drink. Yeah, your favourite drink. I don't like it. Here it comes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. A year's supply. Well, well, well. Sorry. Sorry you've lost your favourite drink, Janice, a whole year's supply of brandy, that beautiful St Bernard dog, but you have lost it, so off you go, folks. I'm sorry, you will live to see us another day, I'm sure. The theme of our show this week, as I've just told you, is it's cruising, OK? And, of course, we like to introduce star personalities on our show each week. And, of course, the star personality on a ship, naturally, would be the captain. We don't have the captain of the ship with us tonight, but we are lucky we do have the captain of England, the captain of the Champions of Europe, and the captain of Liverpool, the great Emlyn Hughes! <laughs> Lovely to see you. Oh, that's our football. That's our MacGuffin, as he called it, is it? 
That's our little prize, right? We've called it more than that, actually, in our time. <laughs> well, I see, hey, I see you've signed it, too. Yes, I've signed it. Oh, yeah. that's great. See, hey, the Scousers, they win everything, oh, see? Oh, I've oh, even asked them, are you a Liverpool supporter? Or certainly. Or certainly. Oh, no. Certainly, it's got to be the pool, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. right. Hey, I don't want to rub anything in. I happen to be a Chelsea supporter, and we beat you twice this, this last season, don't we? <laughs> He's hey, got more um, goals against us than all the rest of the league put together. I know, Chelsea we did, this year. I don't know how we did that. No, we don't ever do it again. <laughs> we don't know neither. Hey, hey, hey Emily, look, you've done it all. It's incredible what you've done in this whole business. It's really fantastic. What would you really say was the most memorable moment you've ever had? Well, I, I think so. As far as Liverpool has been concerned, I think last year when we won the European Cup for the first time over in Rome. More so was, than the second time? Yeah, I think so because. Uh, most of us played in both games, mm -hmm. and the second time was not, not an anti-climax, but it was a little bit, you know, well, we've done it, you know, sure. and sure. we're uh, all tired. I'll tell you one thing, you know, you've been with what Liverpool now, how many years have you been with them? Well, it's, it's my 12th year starting now. 12th year, yeah. so shouldn't you be due for some sort of testimonial soon? I am, actually, yeah. It, really? It's, it started this year. And, Is uh, there a date for it yet? Well, not the game, no. Hopefully we've got Munch and Gladback coming over to play us really? later on in the Fabulous. year. So, okay, well, uh, we look forward to that, Emily. I'll tell you one little thing for these lovely folks here from Liverpool. Have you brought in a little rhyme for them? Well, I have, actually. I mean, I don't know what you're going to get from it, because I don't understand it myself. <laughs> I'm going to read it. It says, We'll sail off to Europe to make it three up. With the craft of a highway, we could steer back the cup. Hey, there you go. There you are. Thank you very much, so Emily. They'll work that one out. They'll work it out, I'm sure. They've yeah. been marvellous so far. Nice Congratulations. Emily. Emily, thanks a million for coming. The great Emily Hughes, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks, Emily. God bless. See ya. Yeah. How about that? Well, that, that was a bonus, wasn't it? That really was a bonus. My goodness. OK, here we are. We're back to, we're back to three here. Which one are you going to reject? The football? Goggles? Go. The goggles? The goggles, yeah. They've definitely yes. got to go, have they? The yes. goggles? Yeah. Right, let's just have a look at that. Okay, that's from the fishy sketch. Find your own gear. Well, there's gears in cars, of course. Go for a sail, but you can't sail in a car. Search for the place of a fishy tail. Well, there really, really is a place with a fishy tail in Copenhagen in Denmark. You would have won a fabulous 15-day holiday cruising oh. around Denmark. Oh. Now, just take one look at this. This is where you would have gone. Right. <laughs> Look at that. That's the Tivoli Gardens in Copenhagen. And there's the wonderful Little Mermaid right on the seafront. Isn't that gorgeous? If you just turn around here and have a look at this. Look what we have here. There's a marvellous little, beautiful porcelain of the Little Mermaid herself. That would have been the voucher you would have gone with. A whole 15-day cruise around Scandinavia, Copenhagen. Never mind, you've rejected it. Thank yeah. you, Gail. Okay. Off we go for it. Yes, would you please? Before I keep getting the whole table full up with stuff. Okay, we're back to two. We've got the football and we've got the triangle there, but we've got one more sketch to go. Go back in, on the board the Yorkshire Rose ship here because there are some very unwelcome visitors aboard. Pirates aboard! Pirates aboard! <laughs> I belong John Silver and this here be my protege, Anne of the Indies. I taught her everything she knows. Be that right, Anne? Aha! talking all day. <laughs> what be the purse's name, Annie? Mr. Thrower. Ah, Percy Thrower. <laughs> Go and get me the money, Annie, as quick as you can. My foot's killing me. <laughs> that be better, that be. What do we have in there? What do we... We have two pieces of eight. Aha, I would change them any day for that young piece over there, that piece of 16. Pirates aboard! There'll only be one other pirate who frightens people on these seas more than I do, Annie. You don't mean... Yes, it be him, the biggest pirate of all time. Hello, yes, it's me. <laughs> What a lot of silly billies. Now, come on, hand over the money. You know I always get it in the end. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not going to come over here, Mr. Rock. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, I think I've got a bit of Dutch Elm disease in my leg. 
Is that catch you carry? <laughs> have, you, have you got a little, little memento to leave, a little MacGuffin or a little object? I've got something in here. <laughs> there something? You are, Mr. Rochester. Poor. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I'm just taking them off. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that, YTV fronts. <laughs> and oh. I've got a rhyme as well. You have. What's in a name? If you but knew, my old Long John's might be a clue. <laughs> I gotta be going now, I gotta put the cat out. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Off you go. <laughs> right, okay. Well, we're having a good conflap here. Oh dear, you're making up your mind again already? Do you want to hear either this one or that one the again? The triangle the again. Triangle. You want to hear the triangle again, okay? Slowly. <laughs> slowly, all right, Sam, I'll do it slowly, and you, Janice. Although a prize she thought she'd found, did he give her the run around? Now, we've got the football, the long johns, <laughs> and the triangle. So she what's it do? You throw out the football? Yeah. The great Emblem Hughes football, he's autographed it, Liverpool supporters and all that. Throw it out. We'll have the autographed football. All right, <laughs> yeah. Now that's, gonna go to the crowd, that's it. You can keep that as well if you like. All right, let's see what you were ejected in the football. Oh. See what it was. What can it be? Okay. Well, Emlyn left us with a ball. He gave us a clue. With the craft of a highway, we could steer back the cup. Well, of course, you drive along a highway in a car, but you wouldn't sail off to Europe in one. But you would if it was an arrow sprint 15 horsepower speedboat with a trailer and a cover to stop it from getting wet. Oh, so what about that? Look at that. Oh, hey, hey, hey. Oh, dear. What is that? How does that make you feel, huh? Oh, dear. Would you have had anywhere to sail then? Oh, You'd have found somewhere. Oh, we found somewhere. Yeah. Down the Mersey Tunnel or somewhere, eh? Well, there we are. We're back to two rejections. We've got two objects. We've got to reject something. It all depends on you now. There's, there's no more now. There's all. no more now. There's the car to come, of course, and there's another fabulous prize, and it's up to the two of you. We've got a really, a really tight situation here. What are you going to do? I can give you the two of these again, as a matter of fact. I'll give you the triangle, which was, although a prize she thought she'd found, did he give her the run around? Or else, the clue from the <coughs> Long Johns, what's in a name, if you but knew, my old Long Johns might be a clue. So there you go, it's up to you. Can you work that out? Oh, wait, the triangle. Go on, talk up loud. They don't mind you hearing, do you? Go on, You're talk really up. scared. I'm really scared. <laughs> yeah. Go on. What, what do you think they should try? What do you think they should get rid of? Try. Go, oh, go. What are you going to do? What are you? The long johns. Why? Right, do you want to wear them? You say I don't mind. You say please. You say please. Yeah. Oh, please. Okay. We'll throw away the triangle. Is it trying a definite decision, Janice? You mean that really? Yes. Well. You asked me to. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Trev, it's going to be a long, long way back to Liverpool, or is it not? It could be a fabulous... One, well, we never know. It's still fabulous prizes on this show. There was a little love match, of course. Did he give her the run around? Well, he certainly did, and what better to run her around in? Than a car. car. Than a beautiful car, and that's the prize. The sh ship's officer hit it right on the note with the triangle. Ladies and gentlemen, the new Chevette car. Oh, oh dear! Oh, dear! Okay. Sorry, she's apologizing to him like mad. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, hey, I'll have a look at that. Yes, we're going on for the last one here. The one that you've left yourselves I think we'll with. Take that one, yeah. You take the long <laughs> job. The long so, yeah. All right then, Trev. Okay, Janice, I wonder what it's gonna be. I tell you, they're all great prizes on this show. It's gotta be good. What's in the name, if you but knew? Well, of course, his name was Long John Silver. The old Long John's might be a clue. Well, did you notice the anchor on the Long John's there? Okay, well, of course, a silver hallmark, that is, is an anchor. And your prize, not pieces of eight that we had in the sketch, but a five-piece sterling silver tea service worth nearly 2,000 pounds. How does that drive you? <laughs> hey! <laughs> Just take a look at that, eh? Two grand's worth of that. That can't be bad, can it, eh? Oh, fabulous. Well, congratulations, anyway. Have you enjoyed coming along oh, today? Oh, great. It's been really well, You've been Thank marvelous. You've been really marvelous. You've got old little Dusty Bin there. You should, shouldn't really have had him, because you got rid of him, but he's a cute character. Lovely. Congratulations on winning that. Ladies and gentlemen, we have uh, 
we have a, a lot more coming next week on the show. We hope you're going to look forward to coming back next week. Many, many more big, big prizes. The old booby prize of Dusty Bing could be with us. We look forward to seeing you all again on 3, 2, 1. Until then, take care. Good luck, Janice. Good luck, Trevor. It's been smashing that the other day. God bless you.